In this problem, just like the last problem, we're going to find a surface area of revolution. But this time, notice that we're rotating around the y-axis. That changes our formulas just slightly. That puts an x in this formula here, or if we choose to integrate with respect to y, that puts an x in this formula here. Again, since the given function is y as a function of x, it probably makes sense for us to use this formula for the surface area of rotation and integrate with respect to x. I guess we'll see how that goes in a minute. But notice that since we're integrating with respect to x, we should rewrite this bit in terms of x. If we plug y equals 1 into this equation up here, we have 1 equals the cubed root of x, which gives us x equals 1. That is going to be our lower limit of integration. If we plug y equals 4 into the original equation, we have 4 equals the cube root of x. Cubing both sides is going to give us x equals 64, making 64 our upper limit of integration. Now we know that y equals x to the 1 3rd power, and taking the derivative of y with respect to x, gives us 1 3rd x to the negative 2 thirds power. Taking that and plugging it into this formula here is going to give us the following integral. Doing one step of simplification algebraically gives us this integral here. Now this is not a nice looking integral. This does not look like it's going to be very much fun to integrate. We could probably work on it for a while and get it to work out. But I'm wondering now if maybe we should use this other formula up here. Maybe we should try to integrate this with respect to y. Let's just see what happens. Now just copying all the information down from the original problem, here's what we're given. If we're integrating now with respect to y, our limits will just go from 1 to 4. However, what we need to do is first solve this equation for x. If we cube both sides, we get x equals y cubed. Taking a derivative of x with respect to y then gives us 3y squared. And if we plug x equals y cubed in for x right here, and if we plug dx dy into our formula up here, let's see how this integration looks. Okay, let's do one step of algebraic simplification. And now I would say that this integral is much better than the previous integral we were looking at because if we set u equal to 1 plus 9y to the fourth, we know that we're going to get du equals 36y cubed. And since we have a y cubed in the integral right here, this is actually going to work out pretty nicely. y cubed dy can then be written as 136 du, and our integral will simplify as follows. Bringing the 136th outside and rewriting writing. And let's not forget that we have a definite integral here, so we need to look at the limits. Our lower limit of integration was y equals 1, but in this formula right here, that corresponds to u equals 10. Our upper limit of integration is y equals 4, and plugging that into this formula up here to find u gives us u equals 2305. So our limits of integration now on u are going to be 10 to 2305. Now let's actually integrate. Adding 1 to the power of u and dividing by that power is going to be the same thing as multiplying by 2 thirds. And now we can simplify that 2 with the 18. That would leave us with pi over 9, but then multiplying that by 3 would give us pi over 27. And we can plug in the upper and lower limits of integration. And that is a pretty ugly answer, which if we really wanted to, we could simplify just a little bit. But in my opinion, this answer is not much better than the answer right above it. So I'm just going to box that thing right there and say that that's the answer. You could use a calculator to get a decimal approximation if you want to. But we are going to call this problem complete. I'm going to zoom out on it so you can see the whole process. Now again, we initially thought that we were going to use this formula up here, and we did all of this work through here until we found that we were not happy about this integral. We then restarted the problem using the second formula, and the second formula gave us a much more reasonable integral, and in the end, we were much more happy with this version of the problem. Okay, as always, I hope that that helps, and I hope that you check out the next video.